Tell us about uh, Sam's progress since we last spoke to you. Yeah, uh, every day I feel like he goes out and gets better. You know, um, I think for you know young players, all of us, but really for young players. Um, you're discovering something new every time you step on the field. You know when you're when you're running these concepts and different things, and just being a part of the offense. Um, there's you know you're learning something new. So for him, that's that's the stage that he's in. Is he's just you know uh, he's learning a lot about these plays and, and the ins and outs of them. And so um, so he's done a good job with that because if something comes up, he, he learns from that, and if he sees it again, he knows the adjustment and, and kind of. You know, never makes the same mistake twice, type of deal, and uh, and uh, obviously that's that's important. So, um, so he's doing a good job. And what have you learned about Teddy that you didn't know? What have I learned about Teddy that I didn't know? Um, man, uh, he's he's a better guy than people said. You know, I think he's he's great to be around. Um, you know, I heard a lot of great things about him before, and uh, he's even better. Um, you know, to be a part of the quarterback room and and. Uh, and you know he's he's playing at a high level, and you know there's a reason why he was a first round pick, and um, and so it's great to see him out there competing, and I think he's a he's an excellent player, and um, and you know he's he's all over. It's fun to have you know uh, a couple guys in there, you know especially a, a veteran like Teddy who's who's been in it. Um, and to bounce ideas off of, been around a lot of good football himself, you know, a lot of good minds, and so, uh, so he's a great, great addition to the room as well. So, it's a, it's a fun room to be a part of, um, you know, just personally because of the, the character of those guys, but also professionally just because of how they approach their job and what they bring to the table. Josh, you, uh, you and Todd both said that Sam doesn't make the same mistake twice. As someone who's obviously been there as a rookie, how impressive is that that he's able to? make those adjustments without making the same mistakes? Well, it's, it, it's, you know, it's very impressive, you know, just early on. Uh, but also, um, I, I think that's a standard that, that uh, you know, every player should hold himself to. And that's, you know, the guys that play in this league and, and, and you know, have a, have a career or guys that can do that, you know. And so uh, he understands that. But I think he, you know, it just, it's a reflection of his study habits and who he is as a person. And, and, uh, and you know, he loves this thing and, and he works very hard at it. And he's always asking the right questions. And, um, and so I think because of that, he gives himself a chance to go out there and, and play that way and not allow the, the same mistake to happen twice. So, um, so it's a credit to his, his hard work and the coaches, you know, preparing him. Uh, both Jeremy and Mick Lombardi does a heck of a job with us, and uh, and you know as far as how much he talks with with uh, with Sam and, and getting him ready to go. So um, so uh, it's a collective you know effort with Sam, but uh, but he's putting in the work, and that's important. One would assume that you've seen everything, you know everything, but are you still learning? Oh yeah, all the time uh, because uh, you know. There's there's 22 guys every snap, so the variables, you know, can, there's a lot of things that can happen, and uh, and so, you, you know, the longer you play, the more you cut down the possibilities. But still, uh, you know, um, the number of things that a defense can throw at you, and, and the number of plays that you can run. Sometimes you haven't seen the look, you know, you, even as long as I've played, sometimes you see a look that, you know, oh man, I've never seen a defense do that to that look or whatever, and uh, and so you're always learning uh, in that regard. Um, but uh, but the other things, the stuff, the knowledge that you have gained over the years and the experience, that's the stuff that uh, that you know I can share with Teddy and Sam, and that Teddy shares with Sam as well. Just being able to kind of go, you know, this is what you can expect, so that you know, hopefully, it speeds up the learning curve for him. Is there anything that you wanted to improve upon from last season this year? Anything I want to improve upon? I think we're all you know always chasing consistency. You know, with just uh, just you know how we play and uh, and. Um, and to you know to always you know maintain a certain level at, you know at, at all times and and, um, and I think that that goes to you know your ability to sustain sustain focus and uh, and um, and just no matter what happens be able to uh, recapture the momentum that you had and get back going again you know and keep stacking wins so um, so in that regard I think that, that's always a focus is to go out. Uh, get completions, stack you know, stack wins, build momentum, and then if there's a sudden change in that, to, ha to have the you know cognitive flexibility to be able to bounce back and, and, and get back on that train. So, um, so that's critical, and uh, and that's something I think 
always is a is you know as a quarterback you always want to improve on. You've been heavily involved with the players' coalition and the advancement of social issues with the league, and we obviously didn't get to ask you about this two weeks ago. But how did you feel about the, the NFL's national anthem policy? Yeah, you know, um, obviously the league, you know, they they make the decisions that they make. I, I still think, you know, from from a player's uh, standpoint. Um, you know, these are important issues, and it's things that you know that as players uh, we care about. And um, and uh, obviously, you know, the league has the right to, to make decisions that they want to make. But uh, I think the focus, you know, uh, is more on the work that's being done and the momentum that we've gained from uh, from the conversation, uh, you know, being brought to the surface, so to speak. And and uh, and so I think, you know. Um, rather than get caught up on the decision that, that the owners make and all that stuff, I think you know it's more important to focus, continue to focus on the work that we're doing and the good that's being done, and um, and you know try to continue to do that and, and try to bring more awareness to that because that's that's all that matters at the end of the day. All the other stuff is just it's it, it's you know. It's talking points for people that try to rally bases and get people involved in, in all these goofy things. And, and, and at the end of the day, the work needs to be done. Good needs to be brought into these situations. And I think that's from a coalition standpoint and just from a personal standpoint, that's what I want to see done is, is you know, we've got a conversation going, much needed for our country for a long time. And now let's capitalize on that momentum by doing good in these communities and, and helping make a difference. You raised about the chemistry here last year. What's it been like inside the room this year as you guys continue to build and build and build? Just in, in this room specifically or just quarterback room? Which as far as the team is concerned. In, yeah, in the locker room, man, it's been great. Uh, you know, there's just, there's a, there's a, it's kind of, I think every 32 locker rooms, everybody would say it's a different vibe right now, and it's like everything feels good, you know. Um, but I do think the continuity for our guys, you know, and some of the young guys, you know, stepping into a, a, a bigger role of leadership. Uh, has has been impressive to watch and, and and to see some of those guys step into the to the forefront and, and to start to lead not only their position group but you be leaders of the team. I think it's special. And I think that's when you gain and you grow as a team is is when you see guys take, taking ownership and we see that right now and it, and it makes for a good you know good locker room and good vibes for sure. Who are some of those young guys you think are stepping up right now? Well, I mean, uh, you know, offensively, I, th I think. Not necessarily a young guy, but but young to the to the Jets was Jermaine. You know, he kind of we started to feel his influence last year during the season. But but you know, it's fun to be around Jermaine Curse for a whole off season and get to feel his influence and, and his energy um, that he brings to us offensively. And uh, and then you know, defensively, obviously Jamal's been a huge influence and and uh, and really owning that part of the ball, that side of the ball, as well as uh, as Leo and Darren and. And uh, and so those things are those things are big for us, you know, because when when especially your high draft picks, when those guys start taking ownership of the team and start start bringing you know bringing the group where they want them to go, uh, that's when I think you make progress. And and it's fun to watch those guys grow into that and, and start to step into that. What about the quarterback, quarterback room specifically? You've been around a lot of those rooms yeah. throughout your career. Yeah. What's been the vibe and why has it been so positive amongst you three? Well, I, I think uh, because you know, a we're all at, at a little bit different stages in our career, and uh, but all wanting the same thing, and that's a for the for to, you know for the quarterbacks at the Jets to play productive football and to, and to, and to play good football, um, but also for each guy individually to do so. And I think we root for that. You know, when we're back there, uh, I think you know Teddy and I, you know, when Sam's in, we're rooting for Sam to have a great rep, and and, and vice versa. Hopefully, they're rooting for me. Um, but it's it's a it's a good room because of that, and. I I think we all get excited for each other's success, and uh, we know that ultimately, when you do that, you compete. And, and, and if a guy's playing well, it's going to bring the best out of the other two guys. And uh, and ultimately, that's great for the quarterback room um, because you know the other two guys get better, but it's also better for the Jets. So um, so I think that's what makes that room fun, and uh, and it's great that you know um, for Sam coming in as a young guy to have. Uh, you know, an older guy like myself and then Teddy, another first round pick. Uh, I think it's great, um, that dynamic, because uh, it allows for him to be able to uh, to hopefully learn a lot, but also for us to be able to compete and push one another. So it's a great, great dynamic. Sorry. How can you grow as a player? Because I know you guys yeah. are asking a lot of questions about the younger guys growing. You had a career year last year. Yeah. And you've had a lot of success in the past. Well, I think for me, the growth is, uh, is just – 
competing with these young guys, you know, young guys that can come in and, and have different skill sets and can make different throws. And so that pushes you. And, and when you have uh, two of the quarterbacks, you know, on the roster that you, you know, that, that we believe are starting quarterbacks in this league. And, and, um, and so when you, when you have that kind of dynamic in the room, it gets competitive and it, and it pushes you. And when you walk out there and you know that Teddy's going to bring his A game every day and Sam's improving every day and, and, uh, and, you know, just with his physical attributes can make all these throws. Um, you got to be on top of it, and so for me, I think I allow uh, their presence to um, to help me even more as I focus, in, you know, on how I'm going to perform because it, it pushes me. So it's a, it's a great dynamic. I love I love this room as much as anyone I've been in, you know, in 17 years because you know not only their character but because of the skill set of everybody. We're going to take two more. One from Andy, and one from Dan. You had talked last year about being excited to be in the same offense for two straight years. I know there's been some changes, but how similar is the offense, and where is your level of excitement to be able to build off? Yeah, I think it's it's been great. Um, you know, JB's done a good job of carrying some things over. Um, you know, I think there was a great foundation late last year of, of kind of, uh, especially some of the stuff that we did in the passing game of, of who we want to be, and and uh, and you know now we're just kind of in year two, we're growing that, and um, and. Uh, and so that's that's been important for us, and I've enjoyed it because, uh, you know, I think for me, for once, like you can kind of study the nuance of things versus like what do we call this this year, you know, which is what you spend most of the time in the spring learning a new offense doing. Um, so now it's actually, you know, you can study more of the defense, more of the checks that you want to make and, and how you want to attack a defense. And so uh, that's been beneficial for me. I've really enjoyed that part and uh, I've waited for that to happen for a long time in my career. So it's been a lot of fun this spring. You were involved with something with Christopher Johnson and Kelvin Beecham with bail reform. What yeah. are you guys looking to accomplish? Well, I think, you know, it's just partnering with the, the governor's office and, and just uh, allowing them to know uh, that, that we're with them and, and, and wanting to see bail reform. Uh, to happen in, in the state because um, just because of the numerous amount of lives that are affected because of, of uh, cash bail and and you know how unjust a lot of it a lot of it is and so for us to be able to lend our voice you know we had a great opportunity last year to to, to do what we call listen and learn tour we went down with the Bronx, Bronx defenders and and sat through um, some public hearings and, and just heard some public defenders and their and their stories and um, and I think you know for all of us uh, it was just it was important to understand like I said it's bigger than the conversation over over anthems and stuff like that but what can we do to help uh, help the situation and how can we be a part of it and so um, so as we looked at it and, and looked at the things uh, locally that we can influence or or lend our our influence to bail reform was one of them and it was it was for us what we thought would be a worthy cause specifically what are you looking to do specifics well specifics I mean like we said there's several things that come up and what we would like to see is uh, a tremendous amount of reform I don't know how you know how how much can get done you know uh, this quickly but just how we how, how the bell system is in general because I think it you know it needs a complete overhaul and and to that degree you know we could talk more about but just uh, but just understanding that that uh, the, the lives that it affects um, and how guys get stuck in the system because of it um, and because of the socioeconomic level they, they're, they're stuck in a the system they're, they're it, the trickle down of that and how it in fact uh, impacts a culture uh, is is tremendous and so I think what we what we are you know aiming to do and why it's so important to us is because we believe that it's one of those pillars in in, in as we look at the uh, legislation and things that are coming up that we can really have make a dent in and make an influence.